Hi, everybody. Welcome to part two of our full album review for Royce to Five Nines The Allegory. This is the show, the Headspace Podcast, where we break down hip hop projects, the new ones, track by track, giving thoughts and opinions on every song, albums such as Royce to Five Nines The Allegory. We already talked about the first 10 tracks and had a nice long ass discussion debating Eminem, Royce to Five Nine, who's the real goat? Let us know in the comments what you think. On that note, there are still 12 tracks for us to talk about let's let's move on let's get into it let's talk about fubu thou shall Alrighty. so this song has such a beautiful beat i have to admit that like i feel like some of the the earlier ones the beats were just not like a thousand percent my cup of tea as far as preference like they they're extremely well made the composition is brilliant but there is a degree of of you have to like also want to listen to it right which is where style comes in and the beautiful part about a project that is as versatile as the allegory has come to be is that there's a lot of different sounds and some of them are going to be excellent and some of them maybe less so and this is all subjective in this case this beat just fucking smashes it slaps hard in my opinion is real dope what do you think of this track i thought it was cool i thought he uh royce really kind of comes in and uh I guess kind of stands up for Detroit a little bit, like just telling people they're not going to fuck with my city, they're not going to fuck where I come from. And it also kind of feels like it's just a lot more bars. Uh, Royce comes off, first starts off, um, thou shalt not fuck with Detroit and me, never owned a Coogie, Ford truck, or a pair of them, Gator Maurice. It, don't know what that means, just a bunch of designer names or whatever. Please hold your applause for these parables and stories. Give all praise to Allah, to God be the glory. My papa raised me like I'm a dog with rabies. Like, you're, I'm, I kind of feel like we're getting more of this, um, just who he is and, and just the idea of kind of like what his background is and where he comes from. And I just felt like it was just that the whole way through. Um, Playing da daha daha in the drop Mercedes, riding with the chopper daily, pupils dilated like a Masada baby, um, nozzle on the gun longer than that one uh, on that Gaga lady. Like it still kind of has this like hostile environment feel. This like I was surrounded by this around my father, around the my environment, and it's just really cool to see how he kind of like paints these pictures. Um, kind of falls through uh first these bitches love it then they hate it then they hate to love it which i thought was really interesting because uh he's really kind of looking at where he kind of fits in the rap game i feel like a little bit just like where his music plays in terms of like everything people may not like it at first then they like it then they're like they, they hate the fact that they love it so much and it's just the, the different stages of like where his music kind of goes kind of kind of solidifying that he can go through all these different stages and still be Royce to five nine still be going on top um yeah how do you feel about the first verse because i, I kind of just repeat myself um i, I feel like it, it's again following through like this album is very clearly at this point an allegorical attack on hip-hop um in terms of what the mainstream represents versus i guess the the purity the integrity side so like i feel like royce to five nine is on team krs1 gospel of hip-hop whereas the enemy here would be I don't want to take shots at Lil Pump, but I feel like Lil Pump exemplifies a lot of um, the other Could we side. Say culture vultures, or is that a different no, combo? It's it's more like look at Lil Pump's music. He right. presents himself like a drug addict, uh, hedonistic, you know, cash money making dealer type guy. Right. I'm not saying he's fully that, but I'm pretty sure like he kind of brags about chopping weed and shit in the earlier tracks at least. Right, right, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So you look at it, and it's like that's a message to put out to the world and it represents something but when you think about why you hear it it's because a lot of rich people somewhere up top said that's the message to put out into the world right anyway um so i really kind of like when he goes i don't care if you rap people is trending topic your shit is garbage you couldn't make a classic out of that trash if you had brenda drop it and i was like because tupac's mom and shit mm -hmm. or no maybe i'm wrong about that anyway uh, I don't know who Brenda is anymore. I'm just going to retract, and y'all can correct me in the comments, and I'll take the L on that one. This is a reference to Tupac's famous... I know, it's Brenda had a baby, but I realized I don't know who Brenda is in the context of anything, so I, I need to go listen to that track again. Whose troubled life and earlier pregnancy caused her to throw her baby into a garbage bin? 
but at the same time it's like alluding to the quality of like i, I don't know I, I guess i took the l on interpreting this bar but at the same point we can get the gist of the fact that he's still i think he's still caught, a lot actually. of people trend hot and i want to just kind of correlate this to my city where maybe some people may hear this and feel like i'm taking shots but like i look around montreal and I see a city of call center software companies and culture in terms of the more jazzy or artsy side of things. The way our city is constructed, there are so few real hoods that it's really weird how little of the music I hear on the English side of my city talks about anything I, I see in my city ever. I lived here for like 30 years. I'm lost. I'm well, lost. I feel like... There's no content relevant to Quebec or Montreal in our content here. It's a lot of people that are, are basically taking trendy sounds and ideas from other places and trying to make it like Montreal without it representing what Montreal is. Because there is certain people that are very legitimate with the lifestyles they live versus what they rap about. Right. But whereas in some demographics, 80 to 90% of the city is that life in our city it's kind of the minority of things it's really not the majority right the majority of people live in work in call centers and retail and like our welfare just gives enough money to pay bills so like like the struggle just isn't the same here in my opinion maybe i'm wrong i mean but i feel like when you listen to other people's music sometimes not all of them it sounds like Montreal could could just be any any hood in the states from the way it sounds, and I'm like our our city's not that hard like that like it's just you don't have to live that life in the same ways that the context and circumstances Royce to five nine is presented. I think it's so if we look at it from that lens of <clears throat> Royce to five nine is forced into that life because of an environment and circumstance. Therefore, that's what I was gonna say is that and, I feel like there's a difference between. There's a difference between being forced into that life and and coming at it from a this is where I come from. These are the facts. This is what happened to 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 result in what I have to deal with and stuff like that. And I guess I'm going to and, and and for anybody who's watching this from Canada or even Montreal, I'm talking so much shit on my ass cuz I don't know, but I feel like people here are just trying to imitate and look. That's literally what I'm saying. Right? Like, they're just going That's to look for that. That's not even figuratively what I'm saying. That's just what I said with a lot less words. Um, yeah, everyone copying other concepts. So where, it's not as authentic anymore. Well, it's just silly because it's not really the core of the issues of our city. Like, if we were being real, we should all be rapping about how does a French supremacy government that's trying to stamp out our right to speak in this language in public. That's a real issue. And I was thinking about it. How, like maybe there are English rappers that are political, but I don't know that I've ever really seen anybody being like Montreal political. Like, fuck would Lego, it, Le Cac is. Would it pop? Who cares? That's what I'm trying to say. It doesn't matter if your shit is trending topic. That's what would pop. Right. Your shit is garbage. And I'm not calling anyone in particular's music garbage. A lot of these dudes is very fucking talented people. But how are you gonna connect with the soul? Of Montreal to create a timeless entity that will actually put our city on the map in an English sense because the French side who actually does rap about our city and our culture and our mm. politics and have opinions holy shit they got some money flowing through that shit English side I don't see it so I mean where's the soul of it like yo where's Where's the people who rap about the extortionist tactics employed by call center managers to exploit your emotional state to get the most out of you to maintain an average handle time and a satisfaction rating? That sounds like a great fucking trap track to be made. That sounds like a trap track that everybody in Montreal lived through. And when I say everybody, I mean most people in this city went through call center bullshit because literally if you speak English and your French isn't strong, you ended up in a call center. You know how I know? Because I lived in this city and you can try to call bullshit, but it's one of the only things you can do if you don't speak French. That's why I said that. And that's the real type of, where is that in our scene? It's not there. Which is kind of what I see Royce doing. He's making, well, that's why I, I kind of 
went on this huge tangent is because Royce is taking what he sees in his world, right. creating this album out of it. And I kind of think that a lot of, not everybody, again, a lot of what I've seen in my city's music scene feels a little bit like what Royce is criticizing. And I know in particular, some of these dudes spit some shit, but work in call centers literally without saying names. I know a couple of people because, yo, well, you all snitch yourselves out on Facebooks a lot. It's not my fault. I'm just I'm just eating my popcorn watching. <laughs> um, if you Montreal hip hop Facebook, woof, it's got some real love and hip hop moments going on sometimes. I enjoy it. I, I, I say boring stuff by comparison. Um, Kid Vicious does the second verse, and I thought he sounded really, really great. Your favorite rapper, sweet. You look up to geeks. I want to flip the world upside down and make y'all look up to the streets. I don't I really believe none like of you that. frail people. A man should never be described as petite. And I was like, that's not fair. Petite just means you're less than 5'2". So that's unfair to the guys under 5'. I'm not petite, though. So, <laughs> uh, I, I, But I get what he's talking about. It's because we have this whole fashionable modern sense where I totally... I totally hate this attack on modern fashion culture personally as a white dude who is really open-minded to the whole queer thing and I'm totally okay with trans people and I am so fine if men fuck men in the ass and shit. That does nothing to me. It doesn't bother me at all. But I also understand a lot of... There's some shit I learned. Like I found out at one point in like slavery times black men were emasculated through homosexual like forced to do homosexual acts which put a certain stain in a perception on the culture just some articles you can learn about that because but like i understand that there's this overarching attack on black men that really does exist like they're vilified there's a lot of maybe not so concrete but if you follow what's going on you can make a strong argument that people are trying to destroy what it is to be a black man i know it i know it's fucking wonky to have this honky ass motherfucker saying this shit but i try to follow certain topics and, and try to understand what's going on and when you look at the jail rates of black men and things like that another move according to a lot of people is the effeminization of black men which is what we're seeing here to which i'm not certain that what you wear should really be the biggest def the definition of your masculinity like in the 80s dudes was all over makeups and shits and that was totally fine because it got you laid and then in the 90s that turned like oh no homo this is just cultural depending on what decade you lived in looking like a lady got you laid or not so sometimes the straightest dude in the world dressed in drag because it got him seven chicks and then the hard ass looking dude stood in the corner not getting laid which one makes sense to me? but again this is my value system and i'm confused by that one fine i'm gonna move past that because he brings it up a lot so i figure this is the part where i comment in general on royce's attacks on this understanding where he's coming from and where they are i get it but i'm also maybe it's not my right to have an opinion and maybe nobody asked me but this is what was mentioned so i popped in um anyway moving on from that i do uh really like when he said tripping watching x vids while i'm with your ex bitch i'm restless because that's my porn site i'm an ex videos guy because uh, mine geeks up in Montreal and they own Pornhub and it's scary what that company is. And while I do think they're acquiring Xvids, for now it's my shit. I like that. I go on that website when, you know, when Bonnie's not around and it's good times. Um, <laughs> overall, I enjoyed this track. Um, I still, I liked even when he's like, well, I'm still building credit out of debt. I appreciate that because I'm in that phase of my life as yep. well. Yep. Um, and I thought this was a really strong track, man. Everything about the beat, the flows, the way to kill it. It's a five on five for me. Even even with that little commentary I gave, I appreciate where it's coming from. And the art side of it is real beautiful. I really like the energy that both of the artists are bringing to put like their cities on the map. I'm pretty, I think uh, it's both just for Detroit. But I like just the, 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 the the determination and just the commitment to being like this is who we are this is the real stuff and it's more like <clears throat> I, it at, at a certain point it kind of feels like braggadocious a little bit but at the other side it's like when you have a more open mind to it it's trying to just peel back layers and get to the understanding of like 
you are who you are because of where you come from and a lot of that is what we're getting so i like this all right i think we can then i guess move on did you give your grade 4.2 perfect let's talk about fubu do, 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 do. all right youtube <laughs> i got a question for y'all that's not related to this review no just what are your it. thoughts no, no, leave it for the fun on the male election. masturbators I'm going to leave it there and let's continue moving on. We're going to have a discussion, Chris and I, on this subject on another video. Because that's the look on his face. You can tell I had some wonky shit to say. What do you think about... No, you start. Griselda. No, I need a Returning minute. here. I need a minute. Conway, Conway the Machine. Machine kicks ass. I love, I, I love Conway the Machine. For just, us, just by go. us. Just for go. us, by us. I really like the concept. Just the idea of for us, by us. Because... It makes me it instantly makes me think of where the the dollar trail is. so like there's some metrics out there that you can find that i don't know all of them by heart but essentially they track how long a dollar stays in the community right and like uh, just like like kind of like and just circulating so, through the community yeah so a black dude makes a dollar it stays in the hood as in it, the black dollar stays in black hands for six hours before it's moved into another community's hands as in so if you ever watch Trigger Warning with Killer Mike, he goes on this quest for three days to like try to only buy from black owned businesses. And it was like fucking impossible because when you run a supply chain, everything is kind of everybody else owned. And when I hear just the idea for us, by us, it makes me just kind of building up a community uh, for your like it's basically what the Jews do. And as a Jew, I see this shit everywhere. It's like Jews got like networks for days. They built up the community. The Jewish dollar stays in the Jewish hood. The Jews buy from Jews. They support Jews, etc., etc. In a sense, it's a great example of for us by us in action. Um, but it's still an it's still like um, an idea, right? Like we can take that for like countries too, instead of like. But I mean, most countries. I know a lot of people already do this shit. The issue is that it's relevant to say it for the hood no right. i i know i'm just i'm just saying like the way that it can be connected on a global scale is pretty cool also that just uh, the ideology of, like for us by us like really just try to unite your local area your surroundings like, from like that instead of trying to reach out to other exports or whatnot it's more like in america if you're a black person when you go to starbucks and when you go to certain things and when you buy certain brands and right. when you effectively go around and where does your dollar go so right, right, right. if black people make money and that money goes to black businesses it kind of creates wealth for black people of course so when i hear for us by us i picture the establishment of wealth for the black community mm -hmm. because f most because they need like, it's really like relevant in terms of that community and i'm not saying that everyone's good at this shit but systemically when you look at the metrics there's no community where the dollar stay the dollar leaves the black community faster than every other cultural breakdown in america so i don't know maybe that's not even what the song is really trying to get at per se but it's just what the title made me think of um anyway conway comes through with this i am that it's obvious these people broke on the pickpocket watching us they see the watch and it's truly we rocking got sick to the stomach now to try to plot on us so in effect we doing well other people is jealous they want to come rob us they want to come at us but now we have gone from the point where we sold drugs now we just sell cds now we got fans in berlin's and getting new hoes go conway i like the fact that you get to fuck the german house that's real dope um i'm just saying like to hear to go from buffalo new york to fucking hoes all over the world is truly a success story in my opinion um anyway he comes on through and it just feels again this establishment of quality we have done it we have made it and i guess it's almost showing that his brand of realness in a sense is for us by us whereas royce to five nine and griselda definitely have that brand of realness in common um I like the way Royce takes it. I'm tired of hearing about what, what all these rappers will do. First of all, none of y'all can last in the booth. I don't know who's faster, your wounds turning black to the blue or the media to stop in the shoe. Um, so it's kind of pointed out that everyone can talk out of shit, but when it comes down to rapping, a lot of people can't really hold up or actually come and spit anything that really means anything. But then, um, like how it all still kind of all this ties together to the to the for us by us and the idea of like connect like of being just taking back what's yours. So then, anyway, he he kind of goes through and goes. Uh, 
couple other lines. You say, got a question how you meant it. I transcend forever monumented. Not even Netflix could document it. Fair enough. There's some situations, whatever. My son got autism from injection from by syringes. Fuck off. Oh, this triggered me. So here's the thing. In my opinion, it's fucking dangerous for a guy like Royce to 5'9", who I think is 98% of it killing it with accuracy and knowledge to drop some shit like fucking anti-vaxxer propaganda. This is actually him being anti-vaxxer. Unless he's satirically making fun of it, what I don't think he is because of that skit that we'll have later on, right? I think he sincerely believes that the autism link is real despite the fact that that guy lied and admitted he lied the dude the whole autism shit comes from like a study that dude lied on he fake shit he anyway there's no proof anywhere that it comes from autism so i'm going to put money down i bet my mother's fucking life that his son did not get autism from injection by syringes okay that just you want to tell me that people got syphilis in Tuscany? Yep. You want to tell me a lot of shit happened where black people have been fucked around with by the U.S. government in a lot of ways? Yes, totally. It totally happened. I'm not even one to say that this shit isn't fucked up like that. I'm, I'm aware of why this is such a believable thing. But it's dangerous because... I'm gonna flip this on y'all. This is my conspiracy. Cause yo, I like to think like a diabolical villain as much as possible. Oh my God. So if you are into the population culling theory, right? The idea is here in this case, they're trying to cull the population by feeding autism to people through vaccinations and whatever other nonsense. Let's flip this. You wanna really kill a lot of people? Get them to stop taking the fucking vaccinations and have the measles fucking come back. And then, the measles brought back in by some rich people right next to the hood. Then the hood stops getting vaccinated and they don't have the health care to deal with it and they get wiped the fuck out. Why? Because y'all stop taking vaccinations. So anyway, just a little foreclosure. If y'all think malaria is not We're real, sick. if y'all think malaria is not real, go jump up with the mosquitoes, dog. Go chill with them. See what happens. Cause you are sick. Am I? This shit pisses me off. Like, I think it's terribly fucking dangerous. The measles is back because <laughs> of dumb fuckers. I just want everybody... Wanna, no, hold on, hold on. I just want... For anybody who's li just listening to this video, you need to see the seriousness in this dude's face. Like, the measles are back. Like, there is the... Like, he is so... <laughs> because guess what? Anti-vax, propaganda, bullshit, conspiracy theory, idiots... Because if you're, if you're going to say, it's like the, the shit that it's like, we it's love like Royce people, though. We just want to say that. I like Royce, but this song lost points just on that principle, because if you're going to, it doesn't matter how smart you are. That's dangerous to promote as facts. When you're, the problem is, is anybody that thinks I'm wrong is going to go, you just buy into the shit. No, I'm fucking well informed, motherfuckers. I researched the shit out of this topic. I looked at, I understand how vaccinations work. I follow Bill Gates's work because he's one of the fucking top people in the world. And when you understand the complications of why vaccinations are good, you also see that infant death rates have gone down around the fucking world. So I don't, I don't know. Like, it's just like the same vaccinations that you think are killing people are literally... I don't I don't know. It's just it's it's fucking wonky. Do you want the measles back? Do you just do you, you want the coronavirus to win? Is that what this is? It's like y'all just want the coronavirus. I mean, why why not? They'll come up with a vaccination. Fuck that shit. Coronavirus me. I'm I'm confused by any motherfucker that wants to go out there and try to imply that vaccinations in any way give autism. That is the most ignorant shit ever. Like it's ignorant. It's just as dumb as telling people to consume lean. Now, if this is satirical. Holy shit. If this is satirical and I missed the point, okay. I just, with black people in America, I believe is the skit. I don't think it's satirical. Whew. Moving along. Uh, otherwise, it's fine, but I got real fucking mad at that shit. This song is otherwise actually fucking a fantastic. I like, have a question. I, what if burying my soul decapio no, from on, the revenant hold on. I right? yeah yeah but i just want to what if the syringes is not 
vaccinations. It's still implying it. It's still making the connection. No, no. It's still well, hold on. fucking I'm dangerous. I'm saying drugs. Like. Why? What? I mean, you know, drugs. No. You can use syringes that sounds, for drugs. It's still like, dangerous. Any anti-vaxxer is going to hear that line and know and hear what the okay, fuck they so, want. Okay, so, uh, so for the line itself, I agree. And in the context but I'm trying of the to song. Find, like, I'm trying to play like devil's advocate here and try to be like, look, maybe he's saying like. Look, it's allegory. Maybe it is. I'm saying, again, because of that skit that comes later on, I'm okay, not so you know convinced. What, you know fine, fine, fine. We How will get I, to that when I, I, skit. I wasn't sure. And then I'm pretty sure he says it a few times in the sense that vaccinations are like, whatever. Okay, fair. We'll, we'll get to that. Go on. So in the context of this song, when I heard that, it stuck out like a sore thumb. And I'm like, oh, I fucking hate when smart people say shit like this because it gives it credibility. And otherwise, it's anyway. It's well. Like, at least somebody on Genius went. My son got autism from injections by syringes. What is this ironic? So ha! Huh, someone else is also questioning it too. Yeah, because it's a fucking stupid lyric. Honestly, it's a. It's like you can be as smart as you want, but what it tells me, and look, given the amount of suspicion, the the amount that I do believe he has read, and a lot of the other things he's saying. I really believe he's attaching this as an attack against black people. Okay. Right? That's what I believe is right, the right, notion. Right, you right, know? Right. Half you people rhyming transgenic, you say you gotta question how you meant it. I transcend forever monumented. Like this sounds like an attack against the things people believe that are wrong. Like that trans being trans is okay. Right. Which again, I think Royce is fucking wrong. I think being trans is okay. Because frankly, but I mean, so again, statistically, like there's just not though, a right? lot of people that are trans, so it's really like a lot of fucking noise for nothing. No, right? But Andre three thousand like, dressed also... in some very questionable ways, and we all loved him for it. I think it's also just from the era that Royce the Five Nine comes from that he thinks like this. He's a boomer, and it just it's okay boomer shit when you get into that line of it. But I also. I I also understand that there is a degree of we have different life experiences as I'm a Canadian liberal. In my 30s, I'm still a Canadian liberal. It's different worlds. However, I think it's fucking stupid that he says some of this shit. And that's fine. I, like, I already commented earlier why I think he gets there, but it's just really good otherwise you know why you put up yours i put up my cup survivors of systems meant to divide us you can only afford what you could buy five up that's the opposite yep. of my criticism yep. that is the smartest shit anybody's actually probably said in a song yep and i'm saying that sincerely because gosh i wish that lesson had been instilled into a younger me type of shit I'm at the Louvre on the floor by the hanging art. I'm putting numbers on the board like a game of darts. And it's just fucking fire. And I like, again, like the, the DiCaprio line. So I feel so torn. This shit has so many great bars and concepts, etc. But end of the day, that one line kind of made it really fucking hard for it. Because you hear it, you're listening to a song, you vibing, and then you hear it. And then I can't not hear it. So I really like this. But I had to give it a 4.4. 4. It lost. It lost some. It would have got a five. Not even gonna lie. It would have got a five if it wasn't for that fucking concept and his transphobia, which is not my favorite. I'm not trying to be too harsh, but it kind of came off like that to me. 4.4. Um, 4. I gave the song a 4.5 just because I do enjoy it at all, even though I like disagree with some of his topics and some of the way of his thinking. He he does express his topics that i disagree with in a way that is eloquent yeah and he does a very like i i still think that maybe if like if there was a conversation to be had royce would probably still be able to have that type of conversation absolutely and which is part of why i kind of look at these bars as like you as the artist you as the person are allowed to express what you want to feel and whatever like that once you know the other side if you know the other side if you know objective facts or whatnot like the whole autism syringe thing like i don't know if you just to prove just for my point if you know factually that that's wrong and you're still saying it then i don't have a fucking problem I'm you're choosing to say it. but if you wrong. don't know then that's where i'm like i'm gonna be clear if you know factually it's wrong and you choose to say it fuck you 
If you don't know, I get it. I believe Royce believes what he's saying is true. And I respect that. I just think what he's saying is dangerous because the problem with something like anti-vaxxers is is if the anti-vaxxers are wrong, everybody dies. And that's fucking stupid. That's unfair. The second you start coming after me, and maybe this is selfish, but the second your decisions affect me, fuck you. You know, and that's... Ironically, I think that's kind of the bigger point of this album is that people should stop living in a way where their decisions affect certain communities in the way that they do. You know, we all need to live different. Yeah. So, anyway. I think we can move on to a very powerful little skit. A black man's favorite shoe. I think this is absolutely disgusting. So, I'm going to quote the genius annotator on this. Uh, his name is Holden Stefan Roy. He went ahead and found this. That's myself. He went ahead and found this article from August 5th, 2019, upon which an actual literal student filmed this video where... This is just the transcript of the video. He's like, he grabbed the audio, and you guys know what the fuck it says. But he has a gun, and he literally shoots the fucking box of Jordans. Like he's just gonna show. He says, "Fuck up, like, he's, fuck all." I he mean, says it hard, R. It even, straight up, like this is. It even. And this is a goes... 2019 video. Can we just can we just roll that back a little second? Because people I know up in Canada here in Montreal like to, or other places like to try to tell me racism's not even thing. It's all exaggerated. When it's not. There's just fucking hateful people up there. Like this guy. I found it very disgusting. Very racist. Very offensive. Um, They were Jordans or Nikes? Uh, Who cares? Well, They're box of Jordans. If it's if Jordans. Jordans, but that's like Michael Jordan, a famous black person. Well, he literally says the favorite pair of shoes for a black right. person. Right, and I feel like he's even implying like he's killing the culture too, and that's what for me really got like not so just the your part pure. where he hates all black no, people. No, that, really get that you. fuck. It's that's obvious. No, don't do that to me. Don't do that to me. It, obviously, don't say shit like that. No, I'm just saying like obviously that part made me irate, but like the fact that for me it's like. You're not even going after just that. You're also going after like, yes, like that was just all of this was crazy. That's when he said they're the worst. They're stinky and they just suck. Yeah, that's that's which I, is I, no. not no. true. In I fact, feel weird. I would argue that in my anecdotal experience, black dudes have way better cologne game than white dudes. I'm just throwing it out there, um, and they tend to not be as stinky as. Like, when you look at Post Malone, you picture Stinky, right? That's what I just wanted to leave it on that. Um, no shots at Post. You you cool, I guess. We have no beef. I think this is disgustingly painful to listen to because it also forces myself to go, shit, you know, people who look like me really do behave like that. And yep. so when somebody looks at me, why would they assume I'm not thinking that? I feel weird, like, just... And I respect the point of that. And so to me, this is a five on five, not because I enjoyed listening to it, but because in the context of this album, I think it really drills down and drops the point of what he was trying to exemplify with For Us Bias. Even with the stupid anti-vaxxer speech and everything, I really admire and respect the part of trying to build up a culture and a history and understanding of who your people are, especially because it's so important to the Jewish people. So it's something like, I guess, is inbred into me to care about that kind of thing. Um, so just how he, it's, it's a slap, but it's, it's delivered flawlessly because this is a real fucking thing that happened not even a year ago. It's amazing. I gave it a, the art of it. I gave it a 4.2, uh, but I do agree that like after breaking it down and really kind of discussing it, it is a five. Uh, but I just gave it a 4.2 just, I guess for my own, um, whatever the way I just kind of feel about it. It's not something I really liked. It wasn't something that I want to hear on this album or whatnot, but I do under like, I guess my preference of listening is not something I want to hear, but I do Nobody understand. Nobody wants to listen to no, shit I, like I this. know, but I'm saying like, I understand its position and its reason for being on the album. So yeah, that's it. I have nothing else to say. Anyway, butcher coming upside down. I'm 90% certain 
um, she's singing the tune of Tom's Diner, which is cool because that's the song that the MP3 was built on. The and I said, it's a boring fucking that. song because, like, it's really I like, like that melody though. But she just like sits there and gets coffee and feels insignificant. It's the stupidest song concept. Oh, it's not that stupid, it's, it's very <laughs> nice. Nice. But uh, I kind of like the melody, so it's cool to juxtapose that shit. Um, I really Oh, it like, does interpolate Tom's Diner. It says so right here in Genius. I really like Ashley Sorrell. Um, she's, I, she's got a gorgeous She's voice. got a beautiful voice. Um, and I like what they... I like what she says here. So the intro starts, there lies upside down, upside down, down. There lies upside down, upside down. And right away, you kind of get this uh, contextualization of just every, like not even the lies are making sense. It just, it's everything's all fucking backwards or uh, back ass words or whatever it is. Um, and it's just all crazy. And, and you can't like, it's kind of lost in trust, lost in confidence. You can't believe anything. So that, I empathize with the anti-vaxxer stance because understanding the entire context of this album, I understand how you can believe that. I just want to show my empathy, Chris, because I do have it. Okay. Then we get into the chorus, and uh, I like when Ashley goes, when you pull up, will you pull it? Right? Are you the shooter, trigger puller? Do you uh, back up what you say you do, or Mr. Soldier, would you? Shoulda, woulda. Oh, sh my bad. I fucked up. But I like how she's in this soft tone, boss like, nonchalant way, challenging people. Like, do you boss up, put your people on, or hate it because you can't do it? Do Absolutely. You speak the truth to power, or be silent, bite the bullet. But I also kind of felt like a siren song feel to this. Like, the way she's singing it and the way I kind of interpret it, it's like the like spirits kind of singing and, and infecting your brain with all of these, like, questions that you may deal with as, like, a person, right? Like, but will you really... it's also a call to integrity. Right. It's like, in response to all the criticisms we've been getting, here's the questions you should be asking. They're all pointed. On the one hand is, are you, are you real or are you fake? It's mm -hmm. like everything can be boiled down into that dichotomy that's being put forward. So it's, are you a real one or a fake one? Which given everything we built up on the album just it continues to flow real well right absolutely then roy starts let's go why the gay people trying to fuck the straight people that's trying to fuck the gay bitches that look just like the straight people i was not gonna comment on this go on and so i thought it was fascinating because i followed it so there are homosexual men that are trying to have sex with straight men I suppose that makes sense. If a straight man's cute, he might be trying to hit that. And then there's James Charles that seems to like to hit on straight boys. Uh, that's trying to fuck the gay ladies. So the straight men are trying to fuck lesbians. And somehow that's okay, right? Because remember, as much as you're not allowed to fuck other men, it's totally cool in all of this conversation for two ladies to go at it. That's That, that kind of gay has always been okay. If you look up the homosexuality laws, half the Arab countries that ban men sex allow women sex for gayness because, you know, if you have your harem, the women have to have sex too. I know I sound like that, but I Google it. You'll see that I have a point to sound like that. And then the gay ones that they want to fuck look just like straight guys. So what he's saying is that everybody's trying to look the same. I guess. I feel like it's like a it, it's it's kind of like a tension and the way that <clears throat> it always kind of moves around on what's popular now right. and what's the next trend the or what's the next thing to do. And then meanwhile, the straight people that the gay bitch is trying to look like trying to look just like the gay people frankly it sounds to me like everyone's trying to be fashionable it it is but i feel like it's a lot for attention like i'm into this one because of this which gets a reaction so, which also gets clout which also it's like everything is now another so way to look at it is sometimes a man just wants to wear a airy a kilty skirty thing like, I know a lot of people might find this to be very homosexual, and I'm about to say, but I want to wear a kilt with no boxers on and feel the breeze in a nice hot summer's day. I really do. I don't care if you disrespect me for that. Fact is, 
if you think what a person wears counts, well, that says a lot about you. Because it's a so fact. You don't care if I come in here with a dress? I'd love it. We'd get fucking views and shit. But why? Why would I care? Wear a dress. Okay. The f is that gonna you fuck women? I know you fuck women. I mean, I'm just no. So but, does so, that make so, you gay? No, you but know what? My, if you wait, hold on, no, no, no. I bet if you wear a dress, you uh, get three at a time. I mean, most probably, but so you, no, so, no, wait, 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 wait. You make fun of my fanny pack though. Because fanny packs are stupid. But why? Because I hate fanny packs. They're a stupid piece of fashion accessory. <laughs> Has nothing to do with men or women. They're just fruity looking. It's not homosexual. It's just they look wimpy. They're little backpacks. Just get a backpack. Just wear a normal backpack. I don't get them. They don't hold enough shit. I don't know. Their size. Man. I don't and know. And then man. they just look like this little thing. I just. I don't. I know. don't like fanny packs. I don't right. have to like fanny packs. No, I'm not saying you have to. But like. But it's not a. It's not about a gay thing. Right. It's not about like. Oh, you look like a bitch. That's not where it's coming from. It's fanny packs look stupid. Everybody wearing a fanny pack, man, woman, child, everybody. Oh, if you're a little child, wear a fanny pack. You know what it is? Fanny packs are for kids, in my opinion. And it bothers me when adults wear them. That's actually it. Okay, okay. <clears throat> look, I'm, I'm glad we got to the root of that. I'm just trying to say, like, I personally don't understand it. Like, black nail polish on dudes is metal to me. Like, it's right. fucking fire. Like, I'd wear mascara and eyeliner if it made me look fucking hot. Because why wouldn't I? So, part of, like, what I'm going to say now is actually going to be spoken about later in another video we're making. But I feel like there is so many of these social norms that we follow or whatnot. That like are stupid. I mean, yeah. I mean, isn't the whole point of this album to say fuck the social norms in a sense and like rebuild an integrity culture because the social norms are so fake and shallow? I mean, yeah. Like to me, to judge somebody on what they wear and look like is just as shallow as to judge somebody for being black. Like, I don't, I don't actually understand that why like this type of, why it's like totally okay. Like, especially these young kids that are coming from a different era, like check it. 20 years ago, 30 years ago, there were the candy kids who were doing a bunch of MDMA and having orgies and shit. I'm certain they all look very fruity by our perception today. But, like, if you go back, like, 200 years ago, all the men were wearing wigs and shit. These white-ass wigs, for some reason. That was fashionable. Mm. Basically, it was getting extensions and shit. That would be something that we wouldn't do today. I mean, it's just such a fickle thing. What it means to be a man should be about the integrity, not the fucking look. And if it's just so strange to me that, like, just because dudes care what they look like, I'm sorry, but half of hip-hop is guys, in my opinion, going on like women about their fashion choices. And I'm talking golden era shit. Nas talking about guest jeans and shit. Like, to me, it's not different. Then guys prancing around. I've never given a shit. I'll put, you know who I respect? Dudes who wear the same shirt every day and it costs $5 a shirt. Those guys understand life. Everybody else that's looking all pretty, you know, Royce with his nice, like, fitted suits and everything looking so picture perfect and pretty. That looks real effeminate to me. It means shirts sure dapper and shit, but it's just as effeminate as a guy in nail polish for how fancy and fanciful he looks. It's the same thing as just like editing a selfie. Cause, like, yo, I mean, I look at some of the shit and I'm like, Rice looks real fancy, real fancy, you know. Still, I know, I know, I went on at length about this shit, but that's how he chose to start this verse. Like, it's a very big deal to him. And again, I understand where he's coming from in terms of the argument being made that this right. is an attack on black men. <clears throat> but you don't see white guy, white guys are doing the same shit, and so is every guys. All guys are just doing this shit. In fact, I think it's because we started caring what we look like, because we should you know it's fun men didn't flirt until the 1700s we just didn't try to seduce women we took them so the entire art of seduction <laughs> is about 300 years old for men we've just evolved to the part now where fashion matters so we're cat we've been catching up to women for hundreds of years just throwing it out there we have a benny to talk about i know but like it's just I just hope this is entertaining to the people watching because <laughs> I'm not committing lyrical homicide. I'm committing podcast homicide against my fucking self while beside Chris O instead of Primo to the downers. I'm drained. No, that's a good line because the downer is drained. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I feel like I talked my way out of this. I really enjoyed listening to the song, but he also makes some really good points. So let's get there.
Well, Gorilla person killing his Twitter TL of verbal <clears throat> abusing females. Bill Mayer used the term so loosely cause truthfully he know he'd be using it on the DL. I don't. I literally censor myself every fucking time. I do not use that word. Louis C.K. know that he can use it in front of Poogie, but know damn well that he couldn't use it in front of DL because uh, he'd fuck you up. And I think that's an interesting point because there are a lot of white dudes who use that fucking word and I hear it. And people rap along, they say it, and I give them shit every time. Like, don't say that word. Every time. Because it just feels weird. And I don't know. Um, and then he goes down a little bit. And I think it's fair. Louis C.K. shouldn't use that fucking word. But he does. And I'm pretty sure he uses it in his fucking skit, like his, his comedy, yeah. to be edgy. And it's not. It makes me respect Louis C.K. less. Um, but then there's... Black women want to be built like cartoon characters. Eric Cartman. That bears a striking resemblance to Sarah Bartman. So Sarah Bartman um, this is was interesting. a black lady from Africa, I think, that was brought over with a giant ass and was paraded I around like a freak black. show. No, I'm pretty sure she was black. Um, and she had a giant... I've heard about her from before this track, and I've, I've seen a caricature of what how big her ass was in an advertisement. So... I'm not a thousand percent certain Eric Cartman is based off of her, but I get the connection he's trying to make with people with their fake asses and trying to honestly look like goofy char characters of people as opposed to actually looking like an individual. Um, and I did Google that because thanks. I really like that he told us to Google shit. I feel like this whole album's full of Googleable, Googleable, Googleable points. And if you Jesus. disagree with me, Google that shit and tell me why I'm wrong. Um, the effort has to go into the art, not the wave. Beautiful lines. Everybody talking about owning their masters, but if the music don't age well, it don't matter. It's like you own 100% of nothing, know your value. And I love the fact that 2017 behind that suit video still get clicks and people still comment because they have value because we care about the value of what we do, Which, even if we're awkward as fuck. I like how he's tying this back into some older tracks that we reviewed on the uh, first part of this album review. Um, again with the music being timeless and it's like if you're not making art or music that's still going to be talked about in years to come or if you're not going to try to achieve that level of greatness then it's like you're not really doing much you're not really standing the test of time or you're not really achieving what it is you want to achieve or whatnot it's it's a, it's a really strong mentality and a very nice belief i believe at least i believe in and then, yeah, Benny. Benny comes through and he's fucking proper. He's my favorite Griselda member. I'm I like how uh, before Benny comes in, and I'll let Holden continue in a minute, but there's like a nice little switch up in the beat. There's a nice little kind of like sonic wave that kind of goes through. And the way that Benny just comes in, it's like the beat stops, kind of transforms, tries something new, and then Benny comes in and just kills it. Um, yeah, I mean, he just kind of, I think, follows through with the air of quality too. All them times you gave him your best, got your complicating stress, cash rules, your last move, got him contemplating your next. Yep. I'm the one that behind the wheel when the conversations go left and he Which violence is an interesting Rashid point. Wallace. I'm okay with the tech. Which is an interesting point where like I like how he's saying that as long as <clears throat> everything's going right, it's totally fine, you know, things are moving smooth, but the minute things start going left, you know, Benny takes over and it's like this sense of kind of feels like there's this sense of um uh, I want to say authority, but I don't think there is authority, but it's like placement in the group. Like he's kind of, he knows where he stands in the group of between them, the, between Westside and, and Conway. And he doesn't like, I don't say, I don't think he's saying it in like, you know, a pissed off way or nothing. Like he, he kind of prides himself on this mentality of like, y'all got roles. We all have to take care yeah. of certain things. It's a unit. It's a way we got to move forward. And I like that. That was really cool. And he goes, white kids pull heaters at school. Wanna be CBS News, became a legend for the skeptics who ain't believe you that dude, and for the mornings I never ate unless they feed me at school. Now that's I, I thought that was a cool juxtaposition because there is a large number of white people who do shootings and a lot of those school shooters are pretty white. Which is for me it's interesting because it's like that idea of 15 minutes of fame now is completely different, right? Like you can go onto YouTube, you can post your videos, you can use social media. But I like how, for me, I'm interpreting this That's as like... not how you get 15 minutes of fame. You get 15 minutes of game pulling a heater at school. No, what I'm... Because that gets CBS news coverage. I, I understand that. But I'm saying like, 
the way I kind of interpret it was they're doing this to get their 15 minutes of fame instead of looking at other avenues that you can do it because they're now in today's. I system. took it more like a commentary on white kids shoot to and news is like the way everything gets represented systemically, painting pictures of the scary black guy with a gun. But hey, look at that. White kids do it too. Um, I don't know. And then kind of how the... I guess the news cycle kind of creates a skeptics and kind of shows that like creates a cycle of people wanting to copy in that. So it's not about 15 minutes of fame. It's just more on the glorification cycle of okay. shooters. So I suppose, yes, it is the 15 minutes of fame in the regards of these kids are trying to become shooters, but it's not to be like famous in the regards of going on YouTube. This is just people who get inspired by what they see in this dangerous cycle and copy it. Um, and then you know it's Griselda. You know we'd affirm without Fox. I thought that was cool because it's three you know dudes and there's no lady with them. Um, everything about timing and I was stern on my clock because people are not grinding trying to eat what I got. Stick to the script. My advantage was hustle, so I'm saying off muscle. I'm hearing careers I could cancel a couple. I just kind of keeps it through showing again that real integrity shit that they, he does. He, he sounds great. He rhymes really well. I enjoyed it a lot. I know my fashion sense sucks, and it's entirely possible you are all looking at Mr. Royce to 5'9", and you're calling him dapper and shit, and I respect that. I'm just trying to say that. It looks like he cares way more about what he looks like than not, and from where I come from, that right. represents a thing. I'm, I'm just putting, I just put my foot right back in my mouth with that one. What's your grade? Um, I gave this a 4.75, because it's kind of hard to listen to the beginning part of the track. Enough. Otherwise, it's fucking flawless. Honestly, it's a 5 on 5. It should be, but it's not because of that. I gave it a 4.5. And I guess I just have a different perspective than other people. Royce got an M, had a, a phone call at some point. It was real deep. And basically, you could argue, as Royce does, that it was this skit, but like way better. Instead, he asked uh, if M, he could send him a beat and you could just kind of talk for a while. And he came back with 12 minutes of M talking and they cut it down to this. Um, Effectively, what he's saying is hip hop is the great unifier. It allowed, in, in more so than many other things, it allowed people of different ethnicities and whatnot to effectively come together and uh, kind of have a better understanding of people. However, if you're a white dude with success in this, you get kind of in a situation where it's like Chuck Berry and them create uh, rock music. Then Elvis comes around and it's like, oh shit, he sells more records because he's white and the system's fucked up. So then he almost gets vilified for it and because of a bunch of stereotypical shit. And then he's also kind of reflecting on how everything's white and everything's like this. And then he gets a chip on his shoulder because ultimately he comes from an environment where he's made to almost feel guilty about this everywhere he goes. And then when you kind of come to the understanding of what it all means, it's on you to make a difference instead of perpetuating that cycle of hatred. Um, another way that you could say is Eminem's trying to say he's not like Elvis and people shouldn't use that argument against him because he contributed to it. And I would argue Eminem is not like Elvis. No, I would say the argument against Elvis jacking black culture and making is is fairer than the argument against Eminem, who really just has contributed to it and done a lot to try to help and to make it dope. He's just really great at it. Whereas Chuck Berry is better than Elvis, like right. hands down, yep. um, in my opinion. You don't have to agree with that either. Uh, I give it a 4.25. I mean, it's a. I like the fact that M wasn't on a song. I like that this is how M made the album, and I like that it made sense on the album to take the white guy and have him kind of like also say the predefined scripts that we all follow are stupid and we have the power to be different i agree i that's exactly how i kind of felt with it too was that it was interesting to me that they picked uh well not interesting i wasn't actually surprised that eminem was giving this speech on the on the album uh with royce and it was just interesting I agree. That he it was didn't, not surprising at all um it was also just interesting that he didn't do a feature or nothing because a lot of like you know i kind of see a lot of shady albums that come out or at least the projects off shady records and 
he's always there on like a verse or whatnot. This is but... in a Shady Records project. Royce is a solo artist, isn't signed to um, Sla- nice. uh, Shady. He's as part of Bad Meets Evil and Slaughterhouse. Perfect. Um, but I, I gave it a 4.2. I thought it was really cool. I thought it was a little bit of like an eye opener. Um, and it was just, it was just, it did its job. Like it just did its job. With that, the next track is Tricked. He did it again. I forgot about this line earlier when I was talking about it right before the the, the skit. We doing it. Royce the five nine in the track about how the system is tricking you. And again, I agree with him. They've been tricked. We've been tricked. It's a trick. Yep. The system's full of shit. You yep. think Canada's not racist? Watch how Trudeau basically said, fuck the native people. We're going to violate the treaties for the sake of capitalist pipelines. Yo, Canada, modern 2020 shit. So, yo, it's all bullshit. Everyone full of shit. Trudeau full of shit. Trump full of shit. That's all fair. The system is full of tricks, yo. Pharmaceutical companies do all sorts of bullshit. Vaccinations are legitimate, okay? They are fucking important. And it requires a 90% herd immunization rate or else they become ill-effective, meaning we all got the shots for fucking nothing and then we need new shots. <sighs> From day one at the hospital, they target our children, say they're going to immunize them and say somehow get autism. You don't have the data on that. There is no credible data on that. Many people have fucking looked. That's just propaganda. So use anything else. Say, if you really want, I'll give you, I'll give you the lines. We don't know what they put in, in that shit is fair. We don't know that. Make up something, okay? Say that the government is putting tracking cookies, little nano robots into it. That's more believable to me that the government is trying to spy on me through vaccinations than that people get autism from it. That's just dumb because science and shit. Oh, it's a trick. Oh, fuck. I'm trapped in the logic trap that ends up being here. Because if you think that everything that exists is a lie, then you can just pick and choose what's true. And there, that's why I said it's a dangerous thing to put this autism shit in here because it's bullshit. And everything else he says is, in my opinion, not bullshit. Literally every other bar in this song yeah. is not bullshit by comparison. But that line becomes legitimized because of that. Otherwise, this song is amazing. Tricked into thinking we need that. We need this. Tricked into thinking since we rap, we get rich. Everything about this. The first verse attacks the music industry and the culture. And art. Into, tricked into thinking art is a pie to be split. It's not, yo. Make your art. You get that. You the artist. You deserve right. that shit. Right. That's a farce. It's a lie. We've been tricked. And just the way he does this rhythm, like tricked, tricked, tricked into thinking we need that, we need this. Tricked into thinking since we rap. It has, we, this, it has such uh, a fucking cadence to it. Such a beautiful sounds flow. Sounds like a chant. Like it kind of sounds like a chant. And like like a, people kind of sing along to it. And it kind of, I feel like he's trying to like, in a way, brainwash. But not in like a bad way. It's got like a a ticking to it. Yeah. Like it's trying to put you into a more metronome kind of like, I see what you're saying. And trying to like get you to understand that you've been tricked and like kind of cultivate this idea that is, 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 is what's happening. So you can be quote unquote woke or, you know, like it's that, I don't, I just want to state it now. I don't actually have much to say about it. I think King Crooked does a really great job at mirroring the same shit that Royce kind of does. He has his little part of the industry as well as just kind of certain systematic things that he thinks are tricked. But the song itself is very just straightforward. It doesn't have, for me, it didn't really have much yeah, but depth it or it, it, so much depth. I mean, not like that I had to layer make mistakes in the court of public sin. Got you concentrating on hating the clubs, getting spins, balling up your budget. That's at your expense. Your A and I spending five, they deducting ten. So what they say in here is effectively to add on to all the label shit. They encourage you to live this baller expensive life because it's on the label's loan money. So they'll pay a bunch of shit, but it's not really your money. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, they rob you. And it's always worth talking about how the industry's fucked and there's virtually nothing a record not, label I'm can do for you that. today. I'm just saying like I don't have much to say. I feel like the song's Do really what Griselda did and sign a distro deal with Shady. Don't get signed to Shady. That's what happened to Slaughterhouse. They're not doing as well. Distro deal. Doing real well. Um, anyway, 
maybe I'm talking a lot of shit today. It's fine. Uh, tricked into thinking we need them to exist. Tricked into thinking that my sister's a bitch. Interesting lies. Yeah. No, it's true. You don't need us to exist. It's not bad if we coexist. We could do that too. And then the way that the sister's a bitch line, that's pretty powerful because it is a systemic attack and marketing to make people feel that way about women, especially black women who tend to be hated on for a lot of reasons, for no good reasons over they got attitude and other bullshits when it's, it's just kind of fucked up. Thinking I can kiss these random bitches on the lips, thinking that my health is not an issue till I'm sick. And you look at this and it's saying we're taught to act impulsively without forethought because we've been tricked and brainwashed into mm-hmm. living this way. Anyway, I'm going to skip the autism line. Incriminate myself on record speaking on my life, expect to receive blessings out here cheating on my wife. So it's I live wrong, but I expect all the good shit. Which then, I like how he's he's kind of also implying like everything you've grown up to see and everything that you still see now is still a lie like you like again i agree with if you're going to look at certain people uh videos or like just certain things as entertainment but you know it's wrong i'm okay with that but when you support you know certain videos artists this that or the next thing who may pretend like they support these things and you don't know it's wrong like it's just ignorance or so whatnot you're okay with supporting bad people who know they're being bad. No, nah, I'm not saying okay like I'm support- saying like if you're gonna make that off- active decision to go and watch some like I don't know little pump video, like but you're not like what's wrong like, like I'm, I'm s- not really sure I'm getting the distinction. What here. I'm trying to say is like I know that a lot of this shit is tricks and that a lot of this shit is lies, but. I kind of sit there and still watch it and be like, all right, well, this kind of looks cool. This kind of looks whatever like that. But I'm not like letting myself be tricked into it. Yeah, you are. You're not. Nobody's strong enough to fucking resist the power of marketing. That's ignorant. If you consume that kind of media, it influences you. Okay. That's just facts. You probably get a little vainer. Maybe you start saying the word bitch more. Maybe, some subtle shit. Maybe you start noticing asses more on the subway. You don't know about it. Maybe you, you don't really know. But my point is, is that it actually does impact your behavior, what you listen to, in very subtle ways, because it, it is literally like mind food. Just like reading a book on hate and reading a book on love are going to make you feel different things when you're done. And listening to a song based on vapid fantasy is probably not the same as listening to tricked, tricked, tricked. Because the owners that in prisons are magician, that's a trick. Voila, disappearing in the system, that's a trick. Also, this whole verse is about fucking prison. Like, literally locking people in prison the way black people are exploited um, and put into prison and then labeling that. Sorry, bringing that back to the labels and 360 deals being a prison. Um, made you fall in love with sitting in a prison room. Like, wh- why is it cool to go to jail? I mean, mm-hmm. that is something that hip-hop is not necessarily hip hop i'm going to put the blame on record executives pushing fake narratives i've realized there's a lot of money to be made on glorifying this shit but you know what happens when people go to jail private corporations get slaves because i think it's the 13th amendment that allows for slave labor for prisoners who are disproportionately black men so effectively hip-hop convinces you that it's cool to go to jail then you go to jail and then you become a slave for a while, then you get out and your life's fucked. And ultimately, maybe it's not that cool, is I guess the point that's trying to be made. The trick is that these people have tricked you into thinking it's cool, is what the point is being made. See, I told you there was more to go on. You just you just skipped King Crooked's great message there. Um, I really enjoy I like the... Fu- the right to bear arms was only made for Grizzly Adams is a good I line, because like he's a grizzly. Anyway, plus it's back then. I just... Yeah, like it, it doesn't make sense for the average person to be carrying a gun in 2020 in the context, especially the assault rifles. But this isn't about gun laws. This mm-hmm. is just what it is. I made my stance clear when I talked about darkness on the Eminem review. Anyway, I liked the trick song, but Royce to 59 proceeded to do the anti vaxxer bullshit. So it should be a five, but it's a 4.4 because the song got its punishment grade. I got a 4.5 on this song. That's cool. Let's talk about black people in America. My friend was born in Pakistan. He came to Canada. So he was born in Pakistan. 
and we went to Pakistan together in 2013. He didn't get the shots because he said, literally, he sounded like this skit. Oh, it's all rumors. It's all bullshit. I was born there. It's not real. I'm not going to get sick eating the food. It's all good. Well, you get the shots because the shit that's in the water and crap, the little biologies, the microorganisms, the malarias, these are all real things. Although malaria is less scary because of 20 years of Bill Gates putting shots in people and vaccinating motherfuckers, yes, we have dealt with malaria. So now you can sit there and be like, oh, malaria is not so scary. Yeah, because we did some shit. And you could argue, well, you've been tricked, Holden. You believe in the bullshit. And I'm going to go, that's cool. I'll, I'll make you a deal. I'll take some malaria shots and you don't take some malaria shots. And we'll go to a place with malaria mosquitoes and see what the <laughs> fuck happens when you get sick. Because, yo, let me tell you something. You might think it's all good until... Did your boy get sick? Oh, he got sick. He ate the food dog and his Pakistani belly that was born and ready for it could not handle that shit. Guess what? I took a fucking inoculation specifically for the food. He refused to do it. I got nowhere near as sick as him. I got the shits. He got sick. He got so sick he made us eat fucking fast food for two weeks. Oh, my God. Because he was so afraid. Because guess what? This shit's biology. And it's an ignorant idea to sit there and go, vaccinations and inoculations and all this shit is like the propaganda of AIDS starting in Africa and shit. Like, I don't know what the fucking point that's trying to be made here. Is this satirical? Is this against well, anti-vaxxers? Well, there's, more, there's more to this skate. And then it goes into, they are afraid of, they, they're using malaria and I shit. I feel like I've seen this interview and I just don't know where it's from. Like, cause maybe I'm missing the point, but like. Well, because they also talk about like if every, if like if all the, Af- like, can you imagine if, if African Americans in America decide, you know what, man, fuck America, we're going back home. Like, it's just. There's more to this than just like anti-vaxxers yeah, or whatnot. And they it's would, like, but no, but it starts there, and it kind of to me it perpetuates that they inject you with a bunch of shit and make Africa sound scary with all these diseases and awful shit so that you don't want to go back home, etc. But it's like, I don't know. It's when he goes, black people don't need no shots for that. Why is that? They don't. Why is there even a fucking rumor that you need shots? The way that you told you AIDS started in Africa, right? You could die from malaria. They told you all that stuff. You know that stuff. Why does that rumor even exist? Because they know the value of black people going home. And so essentially what I'm understanding from this, and again, I could be missing the point, but vaccinations and all this shit is being used as a ruse to inject people with shit, ultimately to scare people about going back to Africa. Right. Because America would just be fucked if they did. Which, culturally speaking, yeah, America would take some serious hits there. They would just replace black people with some other demographic. But, I mean, that's cold, but it's what would happen. Maybe it would be less cool. I don't know. Um, I appreciate the value of what he's trying to say because it is... It is an interesting point that we have collectively vilified Africa to a point to make it look savage and unappealing, even though it's pretty, like, fucking modern, all things considered. Uh, When you go look at it, it's like, I don't know. I suppose at first when I started watching videos of people in Africa in, like, major cities and it just looked like major cities, and I was like, oh, yeah, I guess that makes sense, eh? It's 2020. Why wouldn't port cities in an African country look like a fucking modern city? Mm -hmm. But... AIDS did not start in Africa. Fine. I don't know. I don't know where the fuck AIDS started. I know that there's a conspiracy theory that it started by the CIA injecting it to kill black people. Maybe. Malaria. You could die from it. That was real. I'm confused. I'm just so confused by this skit. Like, what's the fucking point of it? Like, so much of this album to me seems real smart. And... I mean, if it's the point that, like, America requires black people for a cultural whatever and there's this fear that black people are just going to leave, I get that point. I just don't get why we fucking around with the idea of vaccinations. I'm certain somebody watching this is like, shut the fuck up, nobody cares anymore. But I really care passionately, and this is my platform. So two on five, because this was some bullshit. I don't understand. I don't understand this one. And maybe I'm too white or some crap. I don't fucking know. 
I gave this a four on five. I feel like just in terms of the project and the way that it kind of comes in and they're just having this idea because it also follows tricked, right? So this could also be kind of like, you know, a dude presenting that he's tricked and believes in all this stuff and that like it, it, it kind of... Is that what it is? Like it kind of all connects, kind of connects in some way. Like, and then... The whole concept, and this is where I get a little bit confused because I feel like the next song also kind of follows this idea in the in this track, number 17, because they're talking about, you know, what if the idea is, you know, if all African-Americans were to go back to their country or go back to, like, Africa. Africa in the next track, two, like, like there's, there, I think, two rappers kind of address the same idea of doing that, but they have missions for it, and we'll just kind of get to that. Which, so which I feel is like fair, but my whole point is, I, I really don't know if if Royce to Five Nine is an anti vaxxer is where I got <laughs> to with this shit, and maybe I shouldn't care that much about it, but I just think it's scary to think that he might be, because that's a scary thought. Royce, if you're watching this, I would love to chat with you about anti vaxxing do you have anything more on this? No. Let's talk about T.I. Sa Hi to Prince White Gold and uh, Roy Some Black Savage. This was a very good song. How do you feel about it? This was a very good song. I do enjoy it. Um, like I was kind of just saying, uh, just to continue my point from that, I feel like this song also does kind of follow the last skit as well. Uh, we've got... Um, we've got... I think it's uh, Sai Hi... And, um, no, okay, so maybe it's just Sci High, because I, I, didn't, I didn't realize that the that Siri was just doing the chorus. But Sci High kind of goes, if I rule the world, I would go return all of the gold that was stole. Uh, re upholster the Re-upholster. Nose. Re-upholster the That's nose. when you put, like, carpety shit back on some stuff and make it look nice. Right. On the Sphinx, it's a world war. Ah, uh, they're trying to take the soul out of the soul. Homies say I sold out. I never sold a show. Like, it kind of seems like they're driving home this idea of going back and, and trying to do good for their people. Well, it totally, well at least sci high on this. On totally this would return the gold. And then, I mean, kind of pointed out that people almost are accusing him of being a sellout that's what i kind of felt like they're trying to take the soul out of a soul so they're, right. they're trying to like you know ruin it which would be on par with a lot of what royce's commentary on the industry has been and then people say he sold out uh, probably because he went with kanye and good music and all that um i never sold out a show so he never really had the success so how the fuck could he sell out even though people drove out and drove so people came to support and mm -hmm. got hoes on the mm -hmm. road to success you got to pay the toll i don't hang with pawns i'm genghis khan so, so i kind of took it like he's killing it <clears throat> right i totally get that one bar does imply that if he controlled the world which is great because it's a call back to if i rode the world with naz and lauren hill um that that's what he would do he would back up africa like that so you're totally um right in that regard well also for like verse two on white, with white even gold in the first verse like yeah ain't the average rapper residing in calabasas mashing the ashton through malagasy and madagascar so like right off the jump he's in africa fucking mm -hmm. cruising you know like but yeah what were you gonna say well i was just gonna say like for uh verse two with uh white gold it was cool how he was like addressing that they're calling that they've been called savages that um how much more do you want you want to send us back to where we come from just because we just savages well here's my ass to kiss yeah yeah i'm made of gold my homie i go back home i'm a gold mine homie we taking all the land back they stole my homie like i like how he still got that type of taking back what's that what's ours we're, we're we have a purpose before we kind of i want to say leave but i'm not saying they have to i'm just saying like you know we have a purpose before we do this we have we I mean, have like <clears throat> but it's also a response to how people are calling them savages but it's like how do we get there all oh, right you came in here and stole some shit well if we really savages we gonna fucking show you what's up and come back and take what's ours which i respect um i feel like this song is very empowering and very much a response to a bit of the last things it's almost like an anthem to rally behind you know mm -hmm. i am the black savage ali and foreman and zaire fighting for black magic 
which is powerful because I'm pretty sure that was that big fight there, Muhammad Ali versus Foreman, you know, Rumble in the Jungle. Right. And it's just these big moments, rifles and flak jackets, mama was suicidal, pop out bad habits, product of a true survival, rocker like Black Sabbath, hopping out the Chevy back, picky, Chevy, Pac, Biggie, Machiavelli, OG like Nas or Reggie, etc. I feel like he's kind of, again, showing his purity to the culture, shouting out powerful influences and moments that are very black, I guess mm -hmm. you could say. And then it's really cool. Um, like Hove telling Laurie Harvey, no, the Rock Nation brunch. Like, these are powerful moments, you know. Right. So when you get to the chorus, one life to live, just don't settle. One life, I'm going to live forever. It's, it's about making something. It's about doing something with the power and the position. So then you get to Psy High where it's like, you know, maybe I'm not successful, but I have gained all of not successful as per se, but maybe you all think I sold out or whatever, but the truth is I'm just strong, doing my shit, being powerful. Mm -hmm. And when he ends it with make sure it's peppercorn sauce on the filet mignon, like I'm just at that level of class, I thought it was powerful too. I do like <clears> how <throat> a lot of the verses have this uh, dark little, con this dark like, tone to it in the beginning. It's kind of like a little bit of a struggle, but they all kind of end on this positive note. Uh, something I noticed in this track. Um, I guess? Well, not like I, super I, positive, but it's like- There's it's, no struggle in, in Royce's verse. Um, I just think this track, is about be proud of who you are for being black. Yeah. I, I think that would be if I were to boil it down into it. It's it's make the most out of it and take pride. In it. And I'll have to give it to him. Royce looks fly in this video. They all look real. I'm a suit guy like that kind of suits. Um, my Although of all the suits, Royce's is my least favorite. And T.I. might be the flyest looking motherfucker to me in that one. Although white gold looks pretty good too. Just in terms of suit quality choices. Anyway, T.I. sounds like T.I., but really political T.I., and I really like that. My first reaction, raise my hands up with the in my antenna, sinner, because we born sinners, killers, because we want dinner, try to warn people, better keep on growing, try to stay away from foreign, better recognize when the devil show his horns, he enjoying his horrors like Donald Goins, etc. And he just kind of, he's just expressing how, again, everything's kind of faking and, and whatever, but he's the shit, he's the young Warren Buff, him in his prime, etc. You know, but I like when he goes, Knew who I was before I got the trap to sell a CD. I've been shoulder to shoulder with gangsters facing LAPD. Felony after felony still, they be yelling me free. Now my philosophy is no possession, no ap apostrophe. So I kind of... I kind of feel like he's evolved in a sense, but he's kind of recollecting that he again comes from his back his back uh, charges in his older life in the same way that a lot of this album has shown that in the past and the harsher circumstances shape these men and the fake glorification of this life is bad. Right. So it kind of just is on theme with all of that. And then it just kind of rolls out. I gave this a five. I think it's fucking wonderful. You gave this a 4.7 And five. nobody talked about anything to do with autism, which was real, real nice. Let's talk about the rhinestone do-rag. <clears throat> We're almost done. So here we have a little pensive piece. It's it's pretty short. It's almost like a skit, but it just turns out to being a track where it's it's almost like appreciating the people who have gone through things to pave the way, which is more of a second half, but the first half also has like this sadness to seeing people have to deal with things that are unfortunate so like white jesus taught you heathens cross you people just to stone you so you know uh heathens cross you just to stone you so people are just kind of assholes right. knowledge and power is all you quicker than ignorance disarms you so in theory if you have the truth itself it's better than you know indulging in ignorance i hate to see t grizzly going through shit he shouldn't be going through I didn't even Google it. I don't know who that is. Uh, T Grizzly's aunt slash manager, if I'm not mistaken, got shot and killed. That I know. Sucks. I know somebody got shot and killed, and, and it's like his manager. But I, I don't hate know if to it's see aunt. Shady respond to shit he shouldn't respond to. Eminem just makes money when he responds to shit. I mean, you might feel that way, but I'm certain the business people encourage Shady to respond, and then he does it. 
so maybe that's why you hate it. I think I just figured out that lyric. Good call, Royce. I hate to see it too, now that I think about it. And then he goes after Trump for a quick second. I like the part where he's like, I can't be under the thumb of one who seems to be attracted to his own daughter. That's, that's kind of fair. Um, but when you fall from that level of flying, who gonna catch you? Pac and Biggie died for you rappers, so you don't have to. Martin and Malcolm died for your blackness. Pure Pursue your masters. I wore that rhinestone do-rag so that you wouldn't have to. I'm gonna need you to Google that too. I did Google it, but Genius actually just had it there. So on his first album cover, he wore a rhinestone do-rag, which in a sense is him taking that same uh, bullet uh, and kind of compromising but to pave the way so that we could be in the world now where you don't have to sell your integrity like that. So I thought this was pretty fucking dope, and I give it a 4.5. For the T Grizzly, uh, it was just his manager. Um, okay. But uh, uh, reportedly lost the life of someone close to him, his manager, Joe Jobina Brown, 41, after bullets suddenly hit yeah, his car off Escalade. Bad shit happened. Yep. Uh, overall, what did I give this track? I'm not sure what you gave it, Chris. I'm trying to open it up. I gave this song a 4.2. I just really enjoyed how he kind of how he kind of brought to light that like, you know, the next generation you need to kind of make something different. I feel like I interpreted it the what? way like he was like he, cause he's he, saying so, understand what people have done and don't make the same fucking mistakes. That's what I'm trying to say. Like like it's your turn. It's your turn to make something better not like we've already look at what we've done look at what we've done for you guys already and paved the way for this it's your time to make it well he's saying you don't have to sell out like we did because these different things happen not necessarily sell out but like right be, appreciate that these people took these sacrifices and then don't waste that opportunity i guess is i guess we're saying the same thing i don't know 4.2 the next track is called young world I feel like he got a couple of young dudes on this one. Vince Staples. And I like Vince Staples as yeah. a whole bunch. Um, definitely felt like by the time I got here, my willingness to care had started to dip a little bit. <coughs> uh, not to say that the quality of the music had dropped, but I don't know. After an hour, sometimes it gets a little harder to put the same level of focus in. But I really did like Vince Staples' verse. It really popped out at me. You know, it comes in with the gun lines, like that double brown need a couple beams. They want a chip of my trip and baby up my streams. That's how I'm swimming. I hear the hissing from the serpentine. They're trying to rat on my kid, get raised to hell, invade the sails. And it's cool, right? Because he's like flowing in with that. I feel like Vince Staples captures the angst of the hood really well. The fear right. and the anxiety of violence and things like that. Right. Um, and he just kind of runs through it, which does fit this album in a sense because these are the kids that are being impacted by this same very industry. These right. are the versions of him when he's coming through. Right. But um, anyway, I liked how it kind of flows through to that line. You ain't thugging till your mothers know you're doing wrong. He was a soldier. He can't come home. She kissed him through the phone. But I'll, but y'all ain't ever do what you rap in. Yankee fitted, bow kick like a snoop in Manhattan. Norf. But I like that because it's pointing out that, like, if you was really gangster, like, this is what's up. Like, you right. know, your mom knows about what you do and your dirt and you're in real jails and real shit's happening. Y'all rap about like, this. You can't, you can't rap about and rep the life that clearly would affect other people around you without it affecting them. Well, it's more... Just because you maybe sold a couple of Nikki bags on the side and your mom never found out about it, uh, you may Doesn't have committed the crime, <laughs> but when you rap about the bags on bags you made off of this, like you didn't necessarily, like if I tried to present myself like a thug, like y'all would call bullshit real fast. Right. Um, I mean, it's just that's how I took his verse, and then it really fit. And then you have the the chorus, "Hey, young man, um, y'all fake man, y'all know the B from the hood. It'll never tell him. DJ, turn it up, turn it up. The bitch is the chain, respect before fame. Those are the things that make young men uh, world go round." No, I like how he's kind of addressing that. I, I the way I interpret it is that this is what the younger generation or the young kids are looking at is just for these materialistic but, things. And I think, but it's more than that. These are the concepts that <clears throat> Royce has been attacking throughout this whole project being right. manifested almost from the perspective of young people being inspired for it um 
but I'd, I like how it's like, hey, young world, don't you change for the world. You got to be you. With It's almost like Royce looking at the youth and being like, nah, man, don't let these fuckers influence you. Be strong. Right. I don't know who G. Perico is, but he's got a cool fucking voice. And I like how he starts with that Adderall got you up. Them student loans that you owe got you fucked. People like me stuck on parole. People like me caught cases and never told. Stick to the code. You cracker men make your own rules, but that's only if you really in for the movement. And here it's almost like, you know, Adderall's got people fucked up all over. He's on parole. He never snitched. He did his own thing. Um, you know, got my first check and put some ice on my neck. But it almost feels like this is that gangster life where this is what you end up actually, this is what he's living. I don't feel like he's being fake with it. I feel like he's kind of actually done some of this shit. Um, but I think that he's also like given given the like the title young world and because the way he ends it it's also like young world young world make way for the new progressive gangster with the curl so i feel like he's also kind of saying like this is what uh, like i'm really repping for the younger kids like i'm really speaking out and this is what we really up to we're dealing with adderall we're dealing with this we're dealing with that but i also feel like he's almost putting it from a perspective of like you know he's elevated a past it right 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 when he's like high fashion got me scoring big without the fine girls it was all a dream gq magazines which is cool because it's a biggie line right. and i like when people shut that up hit the billboard throwing up the two so it feels like yes he has this situation where he's observing all this go down but at the same time maybe there's a more progressive way to flip this narrative into something more powerful um and then uh what i thought was cool was the interlude with the carolina panthers have selected their number one draft chauncey whatever it's rumored he bought his mom a house and then the commentary on that she'll be paying off the interest for the rest of her life congratulations as though yeah the the house is an interesting gift it sounds real nice but every year on that house is going to be taxes it's going to be this is it's going to be shit where ultimately it's like handing somebody a fucking bill forever right and then it kind of talks about how P-, P. Diddy wanted to buy the Carolina Panthers and then I kind of like how Royce is like fuck the Panthers as though like this is a bad institution this is some bullshit right and the NFL in general is it the NFL I don't actually know what a Carolina Panther is I have no idea what fucking sport it is anyway we out of fucking Panthers so I like that because he's pointing out that there's no Black Panthers left and maybe and he's commenting on the lack of revolutionary leaders within the community Throwing Benjamins, though we could hardly trust the dancer. American football team. Fair, so it's football. I don't know if the AFL and the NFL are the same shits. I have no fucking idea. Um, though Benjamins, I like the idea of like how he's like, we throw money at women we don't trust. Like we just give the money away to people who yep. are going to scorn us and shit. Anyway, uh, he wishes he could give George Zimmerman and Carly Hustle cancer, and then he made millions off of P Rhyme, bruh. No one would front, though, like where the fans be lined up. And I thought that was interesting because um, it's not like a fake thing for him. And, but people may be commenting, is that true or whatever? I, I don't know. I like when he goes straight boss, my pheromone secrete Elon Musk. I've grown to rebuke the Bible, had homies that are suicidal. I loan them until they wrong me when grown men too entitled. And I feel like he's just kind of thinking back a little bit on his life, his progression to where he is. Uh, looking at the youth of the situation, the unfairness of it all, but recognizing he's no longer the young guy. He's a bit of the boss guy now, and he's trying to put shit out there. So he took right. his first drink at Dr. Dre home because he was homeless. But nowadays, Wild and Roman, Roman should do as I do. So that was fucking interesting. So he got drunk in Dr. Dre's house because he went to Dre's house. So he was in Rome, and he did as the Romans did. So he got all fucked up in them. But instead, he's pointing out that instead, people when in foreign lands and shit should do what he does, retain the integrity and purity of who he is i ain't here for the prize or medals knowledge of god or lies or devils knowledge of i or the eyes of several death from the gun at the drummer's expense till trump don't send a tweet send a plumber to flint and so he's here to spit truth be powerful and i like the fact that he just calls out trump for tweeting instead of actually doing shit when the truth is somebody does need to still fix the water supply in flint although Jaden Jaden smith is doing some shit there anyway i thought this song was pretty freaking good and i gave it a 4.5 i really liked how royce kind of um was trying to show people like and especially like the younger generation like you know you can overcome certain things just by giving us some of the stories that he was giving us in our verse so that was cool i gave the song a 4.5 fair enough next up we got more ashley sorrell with my people free 
All right, Chris, how do you feel about this one? I thought this one was actually pretty cool. Uh, I like how uh, the intro starts off with let my people go, let my people go. And you're kind of getting this idea like, uh, you know, you can go anywhere between like slavery, hostage, uh, you know, jail cells and all this. Like you're kind of just getting this rush of thoughts. Uh, and then verse one comes in and Ashley Sorrell goes, oh, first off, free Juan, free Brian and free free Jake. And I'm like, OK, so we're going to get some like more prison talk, more about how like the system's fucked up. Uh, behind bars doing bids locked up on he said she said shit separated from their kids the system's sick we guilty before we can even prove our innocence which was really really interesting because it's like she's being just super honest and really just kind of showing like this is what we have to go through and it's not fair where everything's like pinned against us um and it all has to do with like from what i understand it's about like um uh, they lie to the masses and downplay their living conditions with steady like it is but steady they're building more prison cells and increasing college tuition closing down neighborhood no i'm what i'm trying to say is like they're just doing it for the private sectors of the jails because it, it brings in money and they're tar they're being i feel like she's expressing like they're being targeted it's attacking the private prison system and how bullshit it is the more people that go to jail the more money they make they take away fucking all sorts of shit like actual medicines there's no medical attention it's all about fucking bullshit and then commenting on shit like increasing college tuition closing down neighborhood schools they strip away the education to teach people things that they could do to get out of having to be trapped into a prison system there's a lot of systemic bullshit that shows that in certain communities every effort is being made to put people in prison for the sake of capitalistic labor like i was talking about the 13th amendment a little bit earlier that's why i took from that first verse then ring ding dong ring ding 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 dong which is uh from that dr dre track from that old timey shit keep your heads rolling and then uh the bell is ringing the clock is ticking we need to change the way we live in you know to our people in high position in a system being a house how you a public figure only worry about your figure so here it's kind of saying that especially in the celebrity sectors people need to say different shits they need to live different wiser for the community mm -hmm. like how are you a public figure is and you know you are a role model and people are watching you and the only thing you give a fuck about is what you look like that is the first and only good criticism i've heard about the fashion trend so far on this album is how is that more important than your integrity what you wear and shit looking on fleek and shit should not be more important than having a brain that's on fleek and shit right. um yeah and then royce had a, a nightmare the other night that all of his par prayers were denied when you look toward a savage nation for humanity which one do you want more the validation or reality let my people free although i do like royce's voice on this and the way they kind of like auto-tune his singing for that fair but i just like what he's saying you know how in his mind it's like everything said no fuck that you're not getting it it's just going to be savagery and when you ask people what they want more validation or reality people want validation they want to be told their ideas are right literally i have a lyric that's like people want to be told their validation their ideas right like i think it's almost what i say because like this is, he's right he's completely there because if you have your con your conceptions of reality it's like you're not wanting to admit that you're wrong and you might have to change you're more inclined to be validated and then in order to have things change you know let his people be free i i like how in the next verse he's like i rap for the night big l and big and Pac got killed i know that some street people that's real i know some regular people who's just as real some legends who never popped at steals some people who rap is ill real life they're not that ill other people who contract kill and he's kind of pointing out that all things considered he knows all kinds of people the real ones the fake ones people who rap who can kill etc end of the day putting it only thing fly around this way hollow tips i dodged that shit because it doesn't matter what you wear or whatever what's fly he's kicking the bullets fly well, and that's i actually like the line before only gucci we acknowledge around this way is radrick dave radrick davis sure which i actually think is pretty cool solidifying that gucci is the only real kind of real dude because that's real that's gucci's real name is it Roderick davis is gucci's real name yeah like gucci main or yes the, so not gucci the fashion label no so what i'm saying is in my it's that it's about you can't just come here wearing gucci being gucci man is cool but right. you wearing gucci is a problem gave my three to five for marijuana and legalized that shit because you know michigan just fucking legalized weed yep. this year yeah um 
And then he has his appreciation for all these different legends and heroes and people that have done work to create the open levels of honesty that allow Royce to make this album. Because let's be real, once upon a time, there's no way the allegory would have been released. But here we are in a world where we could be discussing this project, which is really cool. Absolutely. I thought this song was beautiful, and I gave it a 4.5. I gave this song a 4.7. Let's talk about Royce's daddy. It's called Hero. I'm not even gonna lie, I'm running out of steam because we've been at this, this is like four hours of recording for us. Yeah, I know. Nobody really wants to watch four hour podcasts, except for the guys that do, that made it this far. You, you guys so much, are up shit, awesome, but yeah, everyone else hates that. And like, you guys talk too much. Literally, we got a comment on Facebook while we're recording this. Too much talking, not enough song. If you want this song, go on fucking Spotify, YouTube, or another platform and play the fucking song. You want a reaction video? Type the word reaction video. Does it say reaction there? No, it says full album review, tracks 12, whatever, 11 to 22. So, not a reaction. Sorry, sometimes I get triggered, you know? I'm just a millennial, a little millennial with all my emotions and shit. How do you feel about his dad? I think this song's cool. Um, here he kind of, because you listen to the last album, and even if he respectfully yeah. put out his his position, he didn't talk to his dad first. And it's something I can relate to, because I'm going to write about my dad, and he's not going to like what I have to say when those songs come out. And I probably should talk to him first. I think the song is beautiful. The beat is great. I mean, lyrically, he just kind of hits it. Like, Crown Royal, but I go up and watch him box and argue with my dad who's going to knock who out shit. He probably going to be mad if my fighter drop his, and that's exactly what happened. Now he got me mopping. So, you just kind of showing, you know, a little goofy thing. It's like, oh, you talked all this shit, and then dad gets mad, makes you go mop, you know? And then, I love the chorus. Papa was my hero without him, I'd be zero, probably six feet below, probably sniffing uh, kilos, you know, showing that his dad kept him from going into this other point of life. But, like, it's it's also interesting because when you know the story, it's not just, like, it, 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 it's not just coming off as his father kept him, like, don't do drugs, but You know, his because, father, like, beat the shit out of him yeah. to keep him from doing drugs. Well, not just that, but his father was also into cocaine. Right. So seeing that type of lifestyle also played a role with, like, Royce not wanting to fall into that or whatnot and then ultimately i like really it's big cop the book orion go and listen to us even though sometimes our home would get abusive but papa showed us tough love don't misconstrue us i talked about his past i thought i did it with respect but i'm just striking all these bags and all the feelings is suppressed i'm just an artist and anytime i write i put the art first in retrospect i feel like you're right we should have talked first i apologize i have so much respect for for ryan for just doing that it's like acknowledging that Yes, he's an artist and he has every right to share his story, but when he talked to his father, he cared so much that he felt the need to write this song addressing the feelings related to possibly making his dad look bad sharing his truth because he appreciates his dad and his dad is still his hero, all things considered. And he just, the way he said that there, and just, I wish I would have talked to you first because you're right, and then we could have ended up getting there. But nah, it's, anyway, then he tells us more of a story about his dad and how he kind of got kicked out for a quick minute and all that's been swept under the rugs. We never talked about it. It wasn't until he let go of his own drudge. He focused on his own feelings and he kind of was able to approach his dad. And I went through a very similar story with my dad where my dad's a fucking dick and some of the shit he did was pretty fucking awful. Maybe not the same tears as some other people's, but it's in the fucking ballpark. Um... And so it was when I chose to approach him differently that things could be different and, and it was kind of like that So I also relate to I just read the truth for free my mind for the BMI only I did only not only did I finally re Realize there is a God I only realized uh, Highly favored one thing that's phenomenal was the day I decided to hold myself accountable for my behavior My bank account would grow all the things Papa instilled inside me was like a common denominator and so I really empathize, relate to that on a personal level. And I think the song ends up being fucking cool, down to the desire to be able to retire my dad and shit. That's the dreams. And then uh, White Gold comes back and there's a beautiful outro. The album ends. I gave this track a five on five because it was sweet and really nice and really well done. I wanted to just touch upon a part uh, in the outro. It's kind of got like these different loops and these different sounds coming in. And there's a certain part where... Um, <clears throat> Royce kind of repeats this uh, idea of just swepping problems under the rug and I related to that a lot because uh, you know he kind of says like look what happened now like look where we're at now it's like uh, 
there's a lot of things in my own personal life with my family and stuff that we kind of just slept under the rug and stuff and now coming back you know i'm 26 now and it's just there's certain things that i'm dealing with that i look back and i feel like i should have dealt with those things back then or we should have had these conversations or whatnot so i really i really did kind of touch with that part of the song um I completely respect his relationship with his father and how he presented the song here. And I like how he's looking at his father in this way of like, I wouldn't be the man I am today if you weren't my father. Like just simple as that, give or take whatever nonsense, bad stuff or X, Y, Z may be uh, associated with his dad or however he feels like it or whatever may have happened. He still like looks at his father like you are still the reason, you know, I am the man I am today. He's his hero. Yeah, exactly. I gave this song a, uh, I gave it a 4.5 on 5. Awesome. We've reached the end. It's been long. Oh, long, tired. long, long. 22 tracks. Hour, seven minutes is this album. It's a true story. Well, not, well, I guess it's not like a true story, like true crime, but like true story that it's a long ass album. Um, but it's a good long ass album. I gave it a 4.526. To me, it's a fucking classic. Why is it a classic? Because it has a timeless quality to it. It is a time capsule showcasing uh the political problems and the versus uh, of the mainstream hip-hop ideology the stuff that the corporate machine puts forth as messaging and the impact it has on communities versus what should maybe be being said what is the integrity what is the right moves because a lot of the vapid nature of things that are happening aren't going to be built to last and so effectively it's an allegory of the music industry where Royce shows by example what a project should be again it's two in a row man Book of Ryan was just as powerful two timeless like fucking albums in a row is pretty dope and he does it in such a way where you're just kind of left understanding how shallow and vapid the music industry really is because of the amount of substance it also taps very deeply into the black experience and it's really political. It's really like his Iliad, like he said it would be in the beginning. And see, he see, he saw a problem, the the destruction of hip hop, and his his approach to fix it was this versatile album where no two songs sound the same. And yes, I gave some some speeches on anti vaxxing sentiments, but like in general, I think it's one of the smartest projects I've heard with so many great ideas. And while I don't have to agree with every idea, there was. 99% of this album is like fucking gold. I mean, I gave it a grade of 90 fucking 5 point something percent. So you can see I'm, I'm pretty much into this project and happily calling it a classic right now. Gave the album a 4.36. I think it was really great. Um, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed reviewing it this morning and it was awesome. But like I said at the beginning, I don't. I don't know if this is something that I'm going to keep going back to only because it's 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 you got to be in a very specific mood I feel to listen to the song like you want to be you, you might want to be in that mood to like listen to really hard lyrics and think and just imagine this album was maybe more for you I mean yeah you might feel differently about the going back to it yeah just throwing it out there. but I, I agree with Chris it's not an everyday album it's a very heavy album Fair enough. I do enjoy the album. I think it's something to check out. Fair. Um, yeah, so thank you all for watching. We're um, steamed out. <laughs> you can totally leave comments, and we'll talk to you in the comment section. By we, I mean me, because Chris is terrible at actually going to the comment section and talking to anyone. Um, but we're totally down to hear what you have to say. Cause Tweet me. I'm, it's I'm really on cool. Twitter. I li I, your Twitter's been there the whole time. Chris Chrome 93 yep. at do with that um and let us know what you think you can like the video if you did you can hit subscribe for more content more reviews other stuff we have some shit in the cooking up mode right now uh, special thanks to the patrons ismail gadamsey chris prado jonathan barnes dj black hurricane linda williams Connie sparks and scribble to dope they support what we do help us upgrade our lives a little bit we're in the upgrading process there's a lot that's going to come and uh, honestly it really helps they also get to tell us what albums they want to see us review so whereas you can comment and it'll take a while they get some priority with that and uh, we make music ourselves you can check that out on this channel i'm on spotify holding us to found roy the alternative grind is my latest release you can check that out let me know what you think i'm spending a quick minute so y'all Oh, long minute, I should say. Live long and prosper, everyone.